What's up everyone, this is Soul Train, and welcome to How to Bounty Snipe 101. The Bounty Sniper class is a blast to play, but it does require a lot of strategy and patience. More importantly, it also is a fantastic support for your team when played right, which is what we will dive into in a second. And no, none of this is anything new. I'm sure many of you are doing the strategy even better than I am. But at the very least, I hope this video helps those of you who want to learn and improve their Star Wars Battlefront game. So here's the outline. First, we're going to jump into the loadout, into the basic idea behind this class and what you need to start bounty sniping. Second, we'll jump into the strategy and how you play, how you get to level 3. Hold on to it and support your team, most importantly. And finally, some application of me actually playing, slash failing, <laughs> where we break things down and get a little more specific. Alright, let's jump in. First, the gun. For the majority of the time, you want to be using the T21B. Yes, there are other guns that can work on smaller, more compact levels, but for the purposes of this video, this is where we'll be focusing. Keeping you out of the enemy's optimal range while staying in yours. Now this loadout is pretty specific and very intentional. First, the jetpack. It might even be the most critical part of this entire loadout. The jetpack is what gets you positioning, which is critical, and we'll dive into later, and keeps you alive. The whole point of this loadout is to get to level 3 and stay there while you wreck face and support your team. Without the jetpack, this just will not happen nearly as well. Second, the scan pulse or explosive shot. This is very level dependent. On levels like Hoth that are very wide and open, definitely the explosive shots. So you can pick people off better at a distance. But where you can't see and the sight lines are bad, such as the forest on Endor, that's where you want the scan pulse. This loadout has a terrible close range time to kill, and you need to be careful. Without scan pulse, you will be a sitting duck if someone gets in close range. Now, both abilities, Scan Pulse and Explosive Shot, are incredible. Experiment with them, you'll get a feel level by level as things go along. And finally, the Pulse Cannon. It's not the most important card, but it is the one that will be getting you most of your kills. Learn this one and master it, we'll be breaking down how to aim with it later. And please don't use the homing shot, it's just a noob killer, and in practical application, all it does is make one player stick behind cover for a few seconds longer while they recharge their own cards. Now I did try to make the cycler rifle work in here for quite a long time, but frankly, it's such a horrible card until they patch it. And we need all three of these cards so much that you really can't substitute anything here. I'm sure some of you will disagree with me, but keep watching, and I think you'll understand as we go. And now, the strategy, in three parts of position, survive, and support. But instead of watching more words, let's see this happening in action and break it down. First thing you need to do is find a position. What makes a good position? Well, number one, height. On Hoth, that pretty much means right here. In a great position where you're either outranging the enemy or flanking them, or both, honestly. So you jet on over here and you jump your way up the mountainside because slopes are weird in Battlefront. And secondly, what makes a good position is sight lines. Now, usually height helps this, but the whole point here is just to make sure that you can see as much of the field as possible where the most amount of enemies will be running. Here, we have two sight lines, one on the left side of that mountain and one on the right, and those also happen to be the primary rebel spawn points. I'm going to check this left side first before we get moving, and it looks like there's Leia. Oh, oh I got a nice shot of her in the beginning. I'll take it. And it looks like I'm going to attract some attention. So I'm going to go find the third reason of what makes for a good position, cover. I'm using that hill to block their view of me from the left, and now at the right I have a full open view to this valley. The cover doesn't have to be some wall in front of you, it can just be a little hill like this that blocks their view of me. Take this stupid thing out. Once I do, I'm going to check below to make sure there's no one else there, and then I'm going to jet over and try to get the objective. Now, normally your teammates should be doing this for you when you're covering them with fire, but in this case, you gotta do the dirty work yourself. Don't be afraid to jump in once you've cleared the area. Of course, just be ready to run away pretty quick because you cannot stand the inevitable flood of rebels that's gonna come on you. You can run back up this hill from the side without a jetpack, by the way. Alright, so now we're back in our position, and we are starting to rack up some kills here. Get him. Missed. That happens. You missed, just pick him off with your gun. You, you have a lot of options here. 
Once you start getting kills, now you're officially in the second phase, and that is survive. As you make kills on a particular sight line, the opposing team is going to notice you more and more. You have to have a sense for this and be completely willing to just run to the other side, block that sight line, and start sniping from a different area. Now the jetpack isn't just for positioning, but survival. If you're taking hits and low on health, jet out of there on a twitch reflex. And presumably, preserve your kill streak. Don't be your hero. You're more benefit to everyone on your team at level 3. You are meant to be a support with this class. To that end, it is your job to take out other snipers. You gotta keep a third eye in your head on any potential enemy sniper positions. So we just made it to level 3, and now everything we just talked about gets magnified. Every time you kill an enemy, all of your cards refresh and you get a power-up. Power-ups are, of course, random. Now, you are triply more deadly to the enemy team and triply more valuable to yours, meaning surviving is that much more important. A level 3 bounty hunter can single-handedly turn the tides of a game at the end, and you need to try to survive to get there every single game. To that end, a level 3 bounty hunter should be thinking primarily about two things, aggro management and power-up management. Once you get to level 3, keep in your head an invisible greed counter. Every single kill is plus one. Here, I've been harassing the enemy team, and I'm getting pretty greedy here. Maybe I'm about plus three, and yep, I get a homing shot lock, and I run to the other side. Once you've aggravated a certain area of the opposing team, move. They will have pulse cannons, and you will die once you are greedy. Second is power-up management. Here, I throw down a mine. Mines are critical power-ups for covering your butt in the later parts of the game. I'll show you why. Here, I'm gonna pop up, get a kill, but then... I'm gonna see a ton of enemies here, and I'm gonna run to the other side to lower the aggro. I drop a squad shield to cover anyone that tries to shoot me, and then I look around. Chain sight line, I see nobody. That's interesting. Oh, another shield. I'm gonna drop that to cover my six. Why? Well... That's why. One of the soldiers saw me and jetpacked up here. However, he couldn't shoot me because of the shields that were in his way, so he ran up right into my waiting proximity line. So now I run into my shield because, look at that, there's another enemy right there. Fortunately, I have a jetpack, so I can get over him and use that rocket to cover. Now I have again defending my position and I can resume my sniping spree. Now if this class has any weaknesses, it will be spaceships. Because people will be mad at you and they will get in the ship and they will target you specifically. The best defense you got, frankly, is just shields and, of course, fighter stupidity. <laughs> This is how I personally rank the power-up use for this class. Card refresh, just because if you miss the pulse cannon or jetpack, you get an instant refresh and it really helps you get to level 3 faster. The thermal imploder, use it right, is an instant buff from level 2 to level 3 or so much. It's all about position. The rocket launcher is also fantastic, as if anyone's in a vehicle or in a turret. Another simple kill. And critical in the later stages is, of course, defense. Shields, proximity mines, etc. I've used and shown so far. Finally, I honestly find the blaster cannon pretty useless. Sometimes you can use it to attack turrets, get some lucky kills or ATAT -AT shots, but mostly I just put it down so I can get something else. Alright, so let's move into application. I intentionally kept us on Hoth to simplify the instructional process, but now I think we can make things interesting. Just got to level 3, and I'm desperately trying to put down my blaster cannon. Finally, I managed to put it down, but look at all the red and radar. So I throw the scan pulse out there as a benefit to my team, and start looking for the red. And bam, get some easy kills. A scan pulse is critically important in levels like this, where no one can see anyone among all the weeds and trees, but it will set you apart and not only help you get to level 3 and stay there, but hugely help your team either guard the, the choke points and whatnot. Got it. Alright, got a rocket. But first, I want to clear out the air from my teammates, so I scan pulse, see all the red in the radar right there, and bam, I try to take some people out. We can nail a few here. Yep. And now I've got a rocket, so I'm going to run up and try to use it at the ATAT. -AT. Supporting the team, getting some kills, hitting the objective. This class can do it all. I also really enjoy this on a drop pod. So here, I just got a thermal imploder, and I'm going to throw it in the direction I see people using my uh, scan pulse. And I'm going to get really lucky, because I'm going to get two kills here, and bam, I'm level three. Now, suddenly, I'm going to start taking some damage here. And, oh, getting fired, so I'm going to jet out of there right into where I know my teammates are. I'm going to use scan pulse here because I'm getting flanked, and the scan pulse will hopefully set my teammates on the guys shooting me. And now, I'm going to go through the steps, find a good position, set up shop, and start nailing some fools down. 
get up here. This is just one of many good positions in this level. You have to be very mobile in this level. Let's get impulse and I see a guy up here and nail him. Again, your job is always to hit other snipers. My stupid blaster cannon, so I got rid of it here. And now I'm looking for more. I'm gonna be using this blaster cannon as a shield. And oh, here come the enemies. So I'm gonna hide back, charge up, and get one. And I get another blaster cannon. That's a bad yeah, they're not in your favor. Uh. Now, uh, here's Hoth again, but with a good example of a greed counter. So we get one kill, and boom, that's one. I'm feeling myself. I'm gonna throw this herd up there just to harass anyone that comes close. And we get two. Yeah, and don't forget to keep using your power-ups. Even if you can't reach them with the imploder, just chuck it out there. Because you don't know if you might get a rocket launcher or something more useful. I somehow missed that shot. That's a good kill. Counter's up two. So I should probably think about moving now, but man, I am feeling myself. I want some kills. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I'm on fire. I'm just gonna keep nearly these people. I love shots like that. And I should be moving right now out of here, but nope. I want that kill. I miss it and totally deserve that. A different example. Uh, the ship on the small version of Endor is great. You can get up here with a jetpack and really harass enemies. And there's a thousand different sight lines you can pursue and cover yourself with the different wings of the ship. Hit the tree there, but that's life. Now, if I could boil down like how to snipe and aim at people well into two things, the first is just make sure you're trying to shoot people that don't know you're there. Like it's so much easier. And second, I would say try to shoot people that aren't moving. I mean, honestly. The sniping is less about getting those perfect jump pack shots, mid-air, 360 spins, and less about just flank the enemy, find where they're not looking, and be there. Like, that guy wasn't looking to me at all. That's the main trick I use. Now, I could write you a whole guide of how far ahead to aim for each weapon, but I really don't think that's useful. Just keep playing. Your aim will get better. You will learn the pulse cannon line and how you do have to aim a little bit ahead for faraway opponents. Scan pulse really is critical at close range. It alone is what will help you win the close range fights. And slowly get up to level 3 if you're going from cover to cover. Because the t 21 b has the worst time to kill in the game. But, oh look at this. Two kills at once. <laughs> you can get lucky. It, it does happen. Um, but good luck repeating that intentionally. So, here's another example of scan pulse working. I see a dude retreating to cover here. And you know what? I'm gonna go nail you. And I miss him, but it still takes off most of his health so I can get it. But I see people, people with the radar, I'll see Luke Skywalker, or whoever that is, enemy hero over there, so I jetpack out. But now I flank the enemy, so I get some easy kills. They're all looking the wrong way. They're not even going to see my blaster bolts if I kill them in the right order. So now I'll look at my radar, I've got a few kills. I see this black dot in the distance, and I also look at my radar, and no one else is that close, so I should be able to nail them. I'll quickly duck behind cover, charge my gun, or pull it out, then charge it. Pop out, and bam! <laughs> He never saw me. Oh, that's so fun. Level 3. Now hopefully we can use it and really bring some destruction to the enemy team. Uh, the place where I'm shooting on this level, Jakku, the whole down Corvette is incredible for snipers. You just need a jump pack to get up there, and then you need another jump pack, uh, I believe, to get into the middle part. I'm not sure. There might be a way up that I haven't found yet. So I got rid of my blaster cannon, and I'm moving here. I got a shield. Um, I, I just hate shields on levels like this, and, I, and I'm gone. I was pretty greedy there. I deserve that. So, But now I know there's snipers out there, and look right here. Yep, see those two people up there? My job now is to hit them, and if I miss it, then I'm one letting my team down. We throw that shield out, now I have free cover in the middle here, and hopefully I can nail No, I missed. But you get the idea. Always try to support your team by taking out other snipers and then taking out their positions or a flanking position near it. Oh, and sometimes super ready, line up the shot, ready to take it, and... <laughs> idiot walks in. Oh, and you can actually be quite the effective hero killer given the right circumstances. So I laid a proxy one right there. Well, if it walks down, gets blown up, I use the explosive shot and just nail him a couple times. And be creative with your positions. It doesn't just need to be the high places or hills. I've actually defended entire choke points and hallways using the level 3 bounty hunter and getting the occasional rocket launcher and shield. And all of this is just the beginning. There's so many more details to dive into, whether it's stage by stage analysis, mode by mode, slight modifications, like changing which gun you use. You explore it, test it out, and let me know what you think.
post in the comments. I'd love to hear more of how you apply this and make what I put here even better. And hey, if you liked anything in here or had some fun, hit that like button, please. It really helps me out. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.